Hi friends, it's Shahzib Afridi from GameLogix and this is the 15th part of our tutorial series how to make a switch game in Unity. In the previous tutorial, I have explained a few things okay, that I would like to do now. So let's first activate this okay, because we need this and uh, let's uh, uh, I haven't attached at the audio clip which is necessary to produce the sound for our uh, main menu okay so let's use the sound and it's done and uh, now uh, let's save the project and let's uh, make it a prefab so let's drag and drop uh, this background menu and music into the prefabs folder. So now it has become uh, a prefab. Okay, and one thing that I need to do is uh, we don't have our federal color attached to our uh, main camera, which is necessary. The same thing that we did in our uh, splash screen scene. Okay, I'm going to do that as well here. So let's do that. Let's attach this filter color here. Now it's done. Let's save the project. Okay, and uh, let's see that we uh, do we hear the sounds or not. Let's play the game. As you can see, we can hear the sounds, uh, but we have a null reference. Let's fix this first. We do have a null reference, and let's see. What the hell? Yeah, it's been updated. My Visual Studio Code. Let's cancel this. Stone sheet federal prefab. Why we are having this error? Yeah, I have uh, kept the original uh, project open for a reason. The object we want to instantiate is uh, null. We have some problem in our screen feather singleton. Let me check our prefabs federal canvas. I think this is the thing that is causing the error, but why? Let me see in the main menu. Oh, we are already in the main menu scene. Shader canvas.
me change the filter reference. Let's it should be fine. Let me run this. Oh yeah. So it's okay. Now we don't have the uh... yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything is fine. Don't have the now. Okay, because I was running the uh, this scene. Okay, if you run this from here, then uh, it will create the problem. For us. As we can see, because uh, it takes the photo canvas prefab from that uh, from the splash screen uh, scene okay and we have used uh, this uh, thing here okay so it's a prefab here okay so it, it takes the uh, parent canvas here and then it does its thing okay so that's why it looks for the prefab and uh, it doesn't find that okay so we need to like we need to play the game from the splash screen uh, scene okay i think that you got the idea as you can see here here is the thing here screen feather singleton awake let me show you this Screen for a singleton awake. Okay, so it looks for our fader reference, and then uh, fader reference is uh, not present here in this scene. Okay, so in main menu scene, so it's not present here. Okay, so it looks for uh, that fader reference, and then what it does. It checks our uh, uh, fader reference okay so here and then it looks for this uh, fader image okay because our uh, Fedder prefab here you can see it's linked with our it's linked with our screen fedder prefab okay this thing which it doesn't get okay it doesn't get that so it uh, throws the null reference exception okay because we don't have uh, this uh, uh, screen fader singleton dot fade out okay so it looks for this fade out which we don't have because our screen fader singleton is not present here okay so Fed out, where is fed out? Here, so it, it throws the null, uh, the null reference exception, okay? Here, it throws the null reference exception because it doesn't get this screen fit texture, okay, which is present in our splash uh, screen scene okay so you got the idea okay so this is the main reason 
object reference not set to an instance of an object okay because we don't have the screen fetter singleton uh, in this uh, in uh, our second uh, scene okay which is present in this scene and splash screen okay here it is attached to our uh, fetter image okay so if you still have some issues or questions about this then let me know in the comment section i will explain them uh, further okay so let's do our thing now the everything is fine let me show you again okay the sound and everything works fine it will fade out so as you can see it's working perfectly fine and now if i click button it does not do anything so uh, it doesn't do anything because we don't have uh, another uh, scene okay so um, let's create another scene mm, new scene and uh, this should be called uh, should be saved here gameplay so this will be our gameplay scene and uh, i am going to create uh, a script um, which will be called our end game canvas controller let me show you which one script this will be this one this okay here this script let me disable this okay so like uh, when we are playing the game let me show you and the player gets out like this and the end game canvas gets displayed okay this so now i am going to write the script for this and then we will create this canvas okay in the next tutorial okay so let's do that and uh, let me cancel this project this original let me close it don't save it's taking some time okay so let's create the script and uh, end uh, game and game canvas controller okay and let's write the code so first of all i don't need uh, these two namespaces and the namespace that i'm going to need is let me show you first and here are one other thing that i forgot to explain what the hell is here the thing that we yeah rotate object okay so in the previous tutorials uh, i remember that i have shown you uh, uh for the play and pause function um it was which one which one which one yeah this one so here we have used another property of time which is uh, where 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 Play and pause function was so I think it was string for a similar term. Yeah, here. Yeah, this pause game. Okay, so time dot scale. So it does what it does. It pause the game and then it resumes its back. Okay, so and now uh, at that time when I was explaining these things, uh, I I had told you that uh, time pause can be used for uh, creating slow motion effects. Okay so that thing we did in the previous tutorial in the part uh, 13th okay here uh, uh, this time dot delta time it uh, returns a very small value like in milliseconds in like a thousand part of the second or you can say a two thousand part of a one second okay so when when that value gets multiplied with our rotation uh, which is equal to 90 
uh, along z axis so when that will you gets multiplied to our rotation uh, that rotation also become a uh, very smaller it it's really becomes very small um, let me show you by a simple deep again then we will write the code okay so time dot delta output let's concatenate uh, the time dot delta okay so you will see the value now let's uh, open main menu and you will see here uh, the value it will be a very small value like 0, 0.00 something like that. As you can see, the value is too small, like 0.01. Okay, so it's uh, giving us the value. So this is a small value, and like 0 0.0198 something like that value. So when that value, when this value, when this small value gets multiplied to our rotation, our rotation becomes also uh, uh, our rotation value becomes also very small. So that's why we can see uh, the rotation in a proper uh, slow motion okay like we wanted it okay so let me show you with the help of calculator it's simple maths but i like to explain things it's who i am and i like that way okay mm. 0 0.019 something like that when it gets multiplied with 90 so it, this this will become also a very small value okay so like 1.7 okay so this will uh, create the slow motion effect i hope that you got the idea okay no one explain things in the way that i do because when i see tutorials when i learn some stuff i like uh, the teachers to explain things like uh, in a complete detail like what's going on behind the scenes okay like just writing the code and uh, doesn't explain uh, things doesn't work for me okay so and the same thing i expect from my students okay like i i i think that they also need to know what's going on behind the scenes okay so because i like working that way okay so yeah so let's write the code okay 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 so let's leave it that okay so i need a private uh, canvas and uh, end game uh, canvas and uh, private uh, text as you can see i can't use text so for that we need to include uh, a namespace unity engine dot ui okay private text now we can use it okay so current score and the uh, highest score okay so we need another method uh, awake okay awake and uh, in the awake what i am going to do is uh, i will use this current score and the game object dot find uh, current score field um, dot get component and 
the text. Okay, so it's all a class and uh, it has its uh, static uh, method. Uh, it's a method of whole game object class finds a game object by name and returns it. What it does, uh, it simply looks for uh, a game object okay by its name and where does it look it looks for here in the hierarchy okay so it will look for uh, the uh, current uh, score field which i haven't created yet i will create it okay in the upcoming tutorials so it will look in the hierarchy and will uh, find the current score field and the spelling should be exactly the same like we did here okay so it will look for uh, the current score field and then when it finds it okay the spelling could be exact when it finds it it will get that and will assign and will assign that current score field text to this current score which is also a text okay so i think that you got the idea let me do this for the highest Yes, so core and then game object dot find and the same thing highest highest score highest score field and then get component. text and then okay so it will do that and uh, now in the start method let's uh, end game canvas will get component uh, canvas okay so simple is that because we will attach this script to our end game canvas controller so it will get that okay it will already have this um, script and we will attach this script to the canvas okay so it will already have the canvas and it will simply get that canvas and will assign it to, uh, and will assign that canvas to our game, uh, end game canvas okay and um, here and our uh, update method what i'm going to do we will simply check if if our end game canvas dot enable if it's equal to true like our end game canvas has been enabled like the player has uh, struck with some object and uh, gets himself knocked off okay the player is not uh, is uh, out now okay you can say so what it will what we will do we will uh, show the uh, score so how current score dot text okay and then temporary game variables we have, uh, we have uh, stored the player preferences in that class and that uh, player score which is uh, an end value and dot to string why because it's an int value okay so we need to convert it to a string because uh, this text can store a value of a string okay so it will store it can store a string so this way we need to uh, type cost it is uh, converted to string type cost it is type cost it is a string okay oops i'm not used to that much quick english okay so that's why okay text uh, temporary game variables and then highest player score dot to string okay so let's save this and let's create another method very quick uh, they should be public because they will use them in inspector for the buttons um,
replay replay button we should call it replay button and uh, it will be like uh, screen feather singleton dot instance dot fade and uh, fade and reload fade and reload level, yeah okay so simple another one should be for our uh, public wide uh, main menu button main menu button swing for the singleton okay dot instance dot fade and load previous level okay so it will take us to our main menu level like we are in the gameplay scene so it will take us to main menu scene okay so yep let's save it and uh, this is it for this tutorial if you haven't understood anything if you have any problems uh, then let me know in the comments and if you haven't subscribed my channel then uh, do a subscription because your support means a lot okay it will keep me motivated and press the bell icon for notifications and see you in the next tutorial